2023 was a turbulent year for flesh and blood, to say the least. Between the powering down of the game, worldwide economic hardships, and other competing games taking off, this past year certainly wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. However, this next year looks to be much brighter. And so in this video, I want to go over the top five things I'd like to see come to flesh and blood in 2024. And so without wasting any time, I'm going to kick off this wish list with an honorable mention, that being what my very last video was about, flesh and blood bundles. That's pretty much all I'm going to say about it. If you want to know my thoughts on this, you can just watch the video. If you haven't already, it'll be in the description. Flesh and blood bundles. It's just a, a very simple wish. But with that, Let's get into number five. Number five. The first thing on my wish list for 2024 is also a sealed product, that being classic constructed pre-cons. I've talked about this in past videos, but I genuinely hope to see these finally come back to the game. There were basic ones right at the start, but ever since then, all we've seen are Blitz pre-cons. Now, don't get me wrong, I love these pre-cons and they are an excellent starting point for brand new players. But because of that, I want these CC pre-cons to not be for the brand new player, but for the player who's been around for a little bit and wants to jump into the more competitive side of things. I would love to see classic constructed pre-cons be a bit beefed up with a handful of majestics and solid deck construction that would allow players to take them directly to their local armories and actually stand a chance. And I think that they should be priced accordingly, being around, you know, maybe 25 to $30, maybe even a bit more, to reflect that these are for players looking to be a bit more serious with the game. When I first got into Magic, the Gathering, I went to my local game store and asked about decks they had and was given the option of a starter deck or the Rot From Within event deck. The event deck was priced a little higher, but the store owner told me that they were far better than the starter decks, and so that's the product I chose. Now, Flesh and Blood's Blitz precons are way stronger than other games' starter decks, which are usually full of crap, but I'd still like there to be a product like an event deck that people who are either coming from another game or are looking to jump into Classic Instructed more seriously could buy. CC precons are a very basic product idea, but one that I think would benefit the game greatly. However, that's it for number five. So now let's move on to number four. Number four. Following in a similar vein to offering players slightly more powerful but still accessible options to competitive play, number four on my wish list is more Majestic Rarity Equipment. Starting with Crucible of War, Majestic Equipment serves the role as being close to the power level of Legendary Equipment, but available at a more affordable price. Most Legendaries typically stick around in the game and offer continuous value, while Common Equipment is usually a one-time use. Majestics are a perfect middle ground, typically offering some block with a one-time effect that removes them from play. Now the power level of Majestic Equipment varies drastically, some being actually ridiculous like Bloodsheath Skeleta, Mask of the Pouncing Lynx, and Courage of Bladehold, while others are, well, Season Savior. But the best of these serve as cheaper versions of legendary cards at a much more affordable price, and I think this is where these cards excel. Think Earthlore Bounty for Tectonic Plating, Vexing Quillhand for Grasp of the Arknight, and Helm of Sharp Eye for Arknight Skullcap or Crown of Providence. Sure, these majestic options aren't as strong as the legendaries, but that's the point. If legendaries are the pinnacle cards and are going to command higher prices, then offering players a cheaper option that gets them a bit closer to that power level than a common piece does is a good thing. And I'd really love to see this rarity be explored more. I'd love to see majestic equipment show up in every set, both so we have a wider variety of affordable options for deck building and because it would help balance what the next thing on my wish list is. Number three. This one has the chance to get me absolutely crucified, so I'm just gonna say it. I want more expensive legendaries. Oh, you sick son of a bitch. I know, I know how evil of me wanting cards to have value. It's just, ever since Outsiders, legendaries have been a bit lackluster to pull, and the prices reflect that. I remember when I pulled my first legendary in Welcome to Wraith. I lost my goddamn mind. These things were rare, and it was such a rush to get one. Now, well, it just doesn't feel great when most, if not all of them, are cheaper than some of the Majestics in the set. Now I understand that we've got rainbow foils and cold foil versions of these cards, so obviously the rainbow foils are going to be a lot cheaper. But when cards this rare are dropping to 10 to $20 from new sets, it takes out all the joy of pulling a legendary, and I'd like to see that joy return to the game at least a little bit. To be clear, I'm not at all advocating for these to go back to being like $150 on average, but I, you know, I also think that pulling a Diadem of Dream State as your legendary in a box feels pretty bad. There are likely several factors in the prices of legendaries, from the pull rate, 
relates to the oversaturation of cards competing for the same slot in a deck. And I'm not going to pretend that I have even a basic understanding of what could be done to make these amazing cards to pull again, since I don't work for the company and don't have any numbers or data to draw from. My best guess is that the biggest reason so many have gone so low in price is due to the lack of player demand. Flesh and Blood is a player's game, and most of the value in new sets goes almost entirely to what the players want. So if legendaries like the Diadem are releasing and seeing no play because people would rather run Crown of Providence, then that's going to tank the price, even if it's a rarer card to pull. And it probably doesn't help that card specifically that it was released in the same set as the reprint of Crown of Providence. But I think that was truly the issue with the value of legendaries in 2023. Most of them just weren't seeing play, not only because there were better options previously printed, but also because a lot of them were designed alongside heroes releasing in those same sets. Heroes that weren't exactly seeing very much play, which leads us to my next wish. Number two. Tying a bit into the legendary discussion, I want there to be viable heroes in new sets again. For several sets, we barely had any action from the newest heroes in 2023, but in 2024, I not only hope for, but expect new releases to have viable metagame heroes. After the powering down of the game, the floor is now open for heroes to actually have an impact upon release, which will be so refreshing after most of last year being dominated by Lexi. Heavy hitters will be releasing at the start of February, and even though we haven't seen much, I am pretty certain that we'll see at least one hero rise to the top of the metagame, and one or two others sit somewhere in the middle. Not everything can be the best, and that's perfectly fine, as long as we don't see another Dust Till Dawn situation, where no one is playing any of the four heroes in that set. Playable heroes in every set will not only do wonders for keeping the metagame fresh and interesting, but it will also help uphold the value of sets after release, as there will be genuine demand for the cards. I have zero doubt that we're going to see incredibly interesting heroes being released. I mean, have you seen the new KO and Kasai, Mwah! But I also want to see new heroes come out and have an impact on the game at least a few weeks after release once people have figured them out a bit. Although there is one way that I can see figuring out a hero taking a bit longer than a few weeks, and that's if I get my ultimate and final wish for Flesh and Blood in 2024. Number one. My number one wish is something that I want so much that even if it's the only thing on this list that we get, I'll be happy. Above even getting powerful metagame changing heroes, I want one thing specifically. A necromancer class. Oh, could you just imagine it? Tossing stuff into your graveyard only to play them back. Like, personally, as cool as playing attacks from the grave would be, I really hope that this could be a class that uses allies. You know, maybe they come in with some counters so they only stick around for a turn or two before they banish themselves. But just honestly, I love decks that have some sort of board state. I mean, I am a prism simp after all. And I also love playing graveyard strategies. This class would just be perfect for the game. Now, I'll be fair and say this final wish of mine is for just new classes in general, but I mean, personally, I really want a necromancer over anything. See, while I perfectly understand that the release of new classes needs to be slower to maintain balance since we only get a few sets a year, I just really want to see more cool stuff. Like, I get that lots of people love assassins, but they're just really not my type of thing. So if we could get a necromancer class, I would be very happy Please and thank you, James and LSS. And you know what? Throw in a pirate class too for DM Armanda. That poor guy has been waiting patiently for a very long time and pirates are pretty cool. You know, not as cool as necromancers, but eh, they're cool enough. Anyways, that was my top five wish list for the next year of Flesh and Blood. If I didn't say anything that you'd like to see, or if you'd like to tear my head off for the legendary section, leave a comment below telling me how stupid I am. But with that, here's to another year of Flesh and Blood and the honest hope that there's many, many more to come. Hey, uh... Just, just for the record, I'm not a part of the whole make legendaries more expensive idea, so you can direct all your hate to Sloop Doop and not me, okay? I'm just here to thank the patrons. Patrons like the Giga Chad Saint, Geeks First, Elixir, Smokopotamus, John, Ty, James, Chemical, Bryant, Transient Fire, and Dark Memoria. Then you've got the Alpha Chad Thomas and the Super Chads Bruno, Jake, Thal, Cece, Eric, Ben, Zajima, Cameron, and Yogbadoodles21. Thanks again as always, and stay chadly, my friends.